This video is about isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons. So I'll just write the definition down here so we can come back to it. Atoms of the same element with different a different number of neutrons. And at this point I just want to um, recap the particles within or the subatomic particles in an atom so that we can understand how the number of neutrons changes the mass. So if you remember in an atom you've got protons, electrons and neutrons the particles with mass are the protons and the neutrons and for the electrons we just write their mass is very small because it's almost insignificant. Now we give protons and neutrons a mass of one because we say it's it's their relative mass so relative to each other they have the, the same mass so we both assign them the value one. So an isotope is an atom of the same element with a different number of neutrons. It has to have the same number of protons because if you change the number of protons in an atom, you change the element itself. So using this key here to help us, this is a segment of the periodic table um, like how you will see it in your data sheet. At the top here, use the key always in your exam, you've got the relative atomic mass. Now you should underline that, really focus on the fact that that's telling you about the mass. You've got the atomic symbol, the name of the element and the atomic or proton number. Now they're really helpful by giving you that clue in brackets, proton number. This tells you the number of protons, so you can see each element has a different proton number. So if you increase the mass by increasing the number of protons, you're changing the element. An isotope, however, changes the number of neutrons. And that means the mass, these top numbers, will be different between different isotopes. For example, if we take um, nitrogen, for example, nitrogen in the period table as you have it has an atomic mass of 14. But in nature, there may well be nitrogens with an atomic mass of 15. This would be an isotope. It has a different mass number and that is because it has another neutron. The proton number would stay the same, so it still have seven protons. That wouldn't change, otherwise it would become oxygen. But the mass number is different because it has another neutron. That's why in your periodic table, chlorine has a mass number which looks unusual. It has a mass number of 35.5 and that is because in nature there are different isotopes of chlorine. There is chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. If you look at chlorine 37 you should see by now that that has two more neutrons than chlorine 35. I'll write that down here just to remind us. So chlorine 37 has two more neutrons. So whenever you get a question about isotopes in your exam, always discuss the difference in the number of neutrons in the isotopes. So chlorine 37, in nature, there's about 25% of chlorine 37 that exists. The rest of the chlorine is this form, chlorine 35, and that accounts for about 
of the chlorine that exists. So the reason why you've got a decimal here is because it's the relative atomic mass and that takes into account the average of all the chlorine atoms found um, in on earth okay in nature so if there's 75% of chlorine 35 and 25% of chlorine 37 the relative atomic mass comes out at 35.5 and you would see this on your periodic table but all of your numbers have been rounded up just to make everything a little bit easier if you look over here at another example of the periodic table you will notice the mass numbers are all decimals and these account for the fact that there are different isotopes of these elements with different numbers of neutrons so these numbers here are an average of the masses of the different isotopes of the elements that are found naturally but for ease, your periodic table has rounded relative at atomic masses, apart from the obvious ones like chlorine. So the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom give it its mass. So we'll just write here the protons added to the neutrons. And isotopes are atoms of the same element with a different number of neutrons and that gives it a different mass and the relative atomic mass is an average of all those um, atomic masses found in nature. So just like we discussed earlier this top number on the periodic table um, stands for relative atomic mass and that is abbreviated to AR and for higher tier, you need to have a secure understanding of the fact that this is an average mass of the isotopes. And on your periodic table, these are all um, or mostly rounded up, um, so you won't see that decimal place there to remind you that it's an average. But you do have different um, isotopes of carbon existing, like carbon-14, for example, and they're taken into account when calculating the relative atomic mass. So the relative atomic masses on the periodic table all relate to the mass of carbon-12. So, for example, the smallest element there, hydrogen, we can easily compare the mass of hydrogen to the relative atomic mass of carbon and we know that hydrogen is one twelfth the size of carbon. Similarly magnesium atomic mass of 24 we can compare that to carbon and we can say that magnesium is two times the size or the mass of carbon. So the relative atomic masses of all the elements on the periodic table are compared to the relative atomic mass of carbon, which is carbon 12.